Let's talk HD Simpsons. One of my most frequently asked questions is, what are the best modern Simpsons episodes to watch? There are, after all, 600 or 700 episodes of the show at this point. And telling a fan of classic Simpsons to go watch 10 to 15 seasons worth of content is not all that helpful. So today, I'm going to give you a sample of 20 episodes to watch from HD Simpsons. I should clarify though, this is not a top 20 list. If you want to see someone's list of top modern Simpsons, check out my recent collaboration with Phantom Strider. As such, I'll be leaving all of those off this list to focus on more of the hidden gems. And since I was putting together a sample of HD Simpsons, I decided to go straight to the source. I reached out to Matt Selman, writer, executive producer, and showrunner of dozens of Simpsons episodes, to provide some of his own picks. He nominated six episodes, which I'm calling the Selman Six. We'll take a look at his picks first, and I'll fill out the rest of the list afterward. So, without further ado... First up, we have Season 21's The Squirt and the Whale. The Simpson family purchase a wind turbine, then later, Bart and Lisa discover a beached whale on the shoreline. Homer vows to help Lisa save it. This is an interesting starting point for this list, as it's definitely one of the heavier episodes featured today. Beached whales are obviously a very serious situation. We hear about them on the news, but this one gets up close and personal, tells a story about Lisa connecting with the whale and doing everything in her power to save it. If you enjoy seeing Homer being super supportive of Lisa, like in Lisa the Iconoclast, I think you'll dig this one. The way they connect Lisa's environmentalism and her relationship to her father is very clever. The wind turbine stuff in Act 1, although unrelated to the rest of the plot, has tons of great jokes in it. Basically, you come for the funny wind energy stuff, you stay for the endearing Homer Lisa storyline. It's a winning combination. I am so glad that Matt nominated this one because I love Sky Police. It's legit one of my favorite HD episodes. And it's not just because of my gambling addiction, I think. In this episode, Members of the church congregation form a card counting team in order to pay for repairs, and Apu teaches them how. I think what really works about Sky Police is seeing these secondary characters in such a new environment, their reluctance to enter the belly of the beast, and how they adapt to their new environment. I love seeing characters like Ned Flanders and the Lovejoys let loose a little. I love seeing Sideshow Mel and Agnes away from their usual Krusty and Skinner jokes. Marge especially is excellent here, her churchy attitude, and gambling experience, makes her the perfect protagonist. This is actually inspired by a real-life story of a Christian card counting team, and The Simpsons put an interesting spin on it. If you're wondering why it's called Sky Police, I'm not going to tell you. It's so incredibly wacky and dumb, but I love it. In Season 28's The Town, Homer fights with Bart over him wearing a Boston Americans hat, and stages a hate-cation to Boston to show him how much it sucks. Yes, we have here a travel episode. I think what elevates the town above other vacation stuff is its strong character relationship focus. They build up a rivalry between Homer and Bart in Act 1, and that conflict drives the rest of the story. Obviously, they do a lot of touristy jokes, but in this case, they clearly serve the goals of the story. Homer and Bart both have their expectations challenged. Lisa adjusts to a completely new environment. Plus, the episode has a bunch of jokes at the expense of a certain New England area football team, which I'm always in favor of. The only weird thing about it is that there's this handsome quarterback and this big party guy. It's strange, they remind me of these guys who play for Tampa Bay. Do you like 1970s crime procedurals? Well, oh boy, do I have an episode for you. In Homer is Where the Art Isn't, a painting by Juan Moreau is stolen, and it's up to freelance insurance investigator Manichek to solve the case. And his prime suspect is Homer Simpson. This episode has a lot going for it. 
a genre parody, an intriguing mystery, a captivating Homer and Lisa storyline. I love how passionate Homer is portrayed here, how he connects with his daughter over a shared interest. It feels like a spiritual sequel to The Book Job, which I say in the most complimentary way possible. The genre parody is so stylish, so charming. Bill Hader absolutely crushes it in the lead role. I love seeing Marge have to deal with this guy. It's also got one of the best opening credit sequences in Simpsons history. No joke, I sometimes turn this on Disney Plus to watch the first couple minutes again. It's that well done. I like you, Manichek. Up next, we have season 30's Krusty the Clown, aka the most difficult Simpsons episode to Google. This is a wacky Krusty adventure, in which he joins the world of actual circus clowning, while Homer falls into the world of TV recapping. It's a very organic concept for a Krusty story, the kind of thing you can't believe the show hadn't tried yet. We've seen him specialize as a TV clown for so long, of course Krusty would have no idea how to deal with the circus. Tell him to do the most basic clowning routine, and he's clueless. We've come a long way since clown college, huh? Homer is pretty adorable during his B-plot. If you've ever wanted to see Homer turn into Abed from Community, this is your chance. There is so much delightful wordplay here, which is unfortunately not the kind of play Marge is looking for. But either way, this subplot is an excellent send-up of the clickbaity recap industry, a sheer delight from start to finish. B-. Finishing out the Selman 6, we're gonna run it back to season 30's Woohoo Done It. This one is like a combination of Behind the Laughter and Who Shot Mr. Burns. Yep, that's right. We have another genre parody mystery on this list. This time a send up of true crime programs. Someone in the Simpson family stole $600 from under the kitchen sink, and the TV crew is gonna find out who. Its main appeal is in the novelty of the characters doing interviews, talking to the camera directly, as well as playing around with the genre. The Simpsons has done this format before, but applying it to a mystery gives it that extra sizzle. It's fun seeing Homer and Lisa squirm on camera, get challenged on their inconsistencies. Marge is fantastic in this, how genre savvy she is, and how she gets on their case about them editing them to look all shady. Many other Springfieldians get in on the fun too. If you really enjoy mockumentaries or mysteries in general, Woohoo Done It will be right up your alley. Before I move on to the rest of the list, I wanted to give Matt Selman a big thanks for providing his picks for this video. I'm a big fan of his work from over the years, and he's always been so helpful and supportive to Simpsons fans. Thanks Matt for all you do. As for the remaining picks, Let's go all the way back to season 20 again. So do you remember the first half of Bart's girlfriend, where he's trying to convince Jessica he's good? Well, here's a new twist on that idea. This time Bart's wooing a love interest played by Anne Hathaway, who actually does have a heart of gold. Yeah, not the most original premise, I suppose, but this one's a winner because of its execution. This is a very sharply written script by the great Mark Wilmar. It knows how to keep throwing these challenging situations at Bart, keep forcing him to quickly think on his feet. Adding Milhouse to the mix is a nice wrinkle to this kind of story, that it avoids a familiar love triangle and brings in a completely different dynamic. I think most people remember this one for Lisa's B-plot, which is very, very understandable. I wouldn't dare spoil it for people who haven't seen it. Let's just say I greatly enjoy the surreal element it adds to this down-to-earth story. We'll leave it at that. I'm only going to put one Treehouse of Horror on this list, and I'm going with number 20. I love this one. It reminds me of what Treehouse of Horror 3 did so well. We've got a classy black and white parody of Alfred Hitchcock films, then an extremely violent send up of 28 Days Later, then a format bending rendition of Sweeney Todd. There's a nice balance between the three stories. The Hitchcock segment is full of this tense atmosphere, this dramatic conflict between Bart and Lisa. Then the second one is all action all the time, shotguns to the face of our favorite characters. 
And then, instead of just doing a traditional recreation of Sweeney Todd, they put on a stage play. It's such a creative twist for one of these. I can't think of any other Treehouse segment like it. I know Halloween specials can feel hit or miss sometimes, that even great specials will sometimes have a dud segment, but I think Treehouse of Horror 20 has three genuine hits in it. In season 21's Oh Brother Where Bart Thou, Bart becomes jealous of Lisa and Maggie's close sisterly bond, wishes he had a brother, and meets an orphan named Charlie. As someone with two sisters and zero brothers, I admit that I relate to this one pretty hard. It feels like an alternate take on season 4's Brother from the Same Planet, except I kind of prefer this setup as it's more focused. We spend more time on Bart's issues specifically, really getting a sense of his childish perspective, how desperately he tries to manipulate the situation. Later on, there are amusing jokes about Bart and Charlie hanging out, being bros, and, uh, whatever it is that brothers do together. I love the casting choice of Jordan Nagai, who played Russell in Up, to be the voice of Charlie. The Simpsons doesn't have many kids playing kid characters, so it's a unique, authentic performance. Oh Brother Where Bart Thou isn't gimmicky, doesn't have a big genre parody or flash forward, it's just a nice solid Bart story full of great jokes. It's as simple as that. If you like the format of Trilogy of Error, you'll like 500 Keys from Season 22. Although its story is more like 300 Big Boys from Futurama, if you're familiar with that one. The Simpson family dump out a drawer of 500 keys they've gathered over the years, and Homer, Marge, Bart, and Lisa each take one of them and go in their separate directions. Now, not all of these plotlines are created equal. One of these stories is the clear A plot, and everything else supports it in different ways. I'll give you a clue, it's not Marge. Hers is in the egg magic tier of hilarious pointlessness. But I like their approach here overall. 500 Keys isn't just about the four plotlines format, there's actually an intriguing puzzle to solve. It keeps dangling new, tantalizing bits of story for the audience. The whole thing comes together in something that is one part trilogy of error, one part sideshow Bob Roberts. You wouldn't think these two would go together, but somehow they do. Okay, I'm gonna be upfront with this one. Your enjoyment of How I Wet Your Mother is going to be dependent on how much you can deal with an Inception parody. This is certainly the craziest episode on the list, conceptually. Basically, the Simpson family enters Homer's dreams to discover the hidden trauma of why Homer keeps wetting the bed. I know, I know, wetting the bed is also a weird premise, but somehow it's handled with a degree of groundedness, Homer dealing with his embarrassment. As with all Inception parodies, the fun is in the different layers of the dream, and the writers and animators delivered. Gotta say, there's so much fan service in this episode. Hardcore fans will appreciate the many references and continuity thrown in. Is this episode cheesy? Yeah, definitely. They are never going to pull off the gravity of the Hans Zimmer score. And the plot is totally cuckoo bananas. But it's very fun and very fan servicey, so it's making the list. If you haven't had enough of Homer's trauma, let me present season 24's To Cur With Love. I had talked about this one in my grandpa video a while back. This is a flashback episode, telling the story of young Homer and his dog Bongo, to explain why he doesn't give Santa's little helper much attention. I mean, why pay attention to your dog when you have free to play mobile games? But anyway, if you love grandpa or want to see him at his most likable, this is where you should go. Honestly, season 24 as a whole is a good destination for that. There's a bunch of young Homer content in here too. I think that's another part of its appeal. This is Homer at his most naive and idealistic, with plenty of scenes of him frolicking around with his dog. In addition, they throw in plenty of continuity nods about characters' origin stories. Generally speaking, the Flash Forward episodes are the ones that get all the attention, but HD Simpsons has plenty of Flash backstories that are well worth your time. I was not expecting The Simpsons to do a spotlight episode about Carl, 
and I was not expecting them to do a travel episode about Iceland. But they did both at once, and it turned out great. I love learning more about Carl's backstory, getting to know him better than just that random guy who does jokes with Lenny. Similar to The Town, this travel episode seamlessly links their overseas adventure to the character relationships. The show has never discussed the nature of these guys' friendship in any detail. How close are these guys in actuality? Does everyone feel the same way? And the Iceland stuff isn't just window dressing. The story is pretty ingrained in its history and culture. The travel jokes perfectly complement its story. The Saga of Carl is one of my go-to examples for how to do both a spotlight episode and a travel episode right. Labor Pains is one of those that rarely gets talked about, so I want to bring it into the conversation. Right here we have a charming Homer story about parenting. After poker night, Homer gets stuck in an elevator with a pregnant woman and helps deliver her son. Afterwards, he forms an attachment with the newborn and inevitably takes things too far. I really enjoy seeing the softer and more nurturing side of Homer's personality. I think that's his biggest selling point. There are a lot of cute little moments between him and the baby. In addition, it makes sure to point out how screwed up and creepy the situation is, that Homer is basically cheating on Maggie. They show off Homer's good intentions and how he gradually gets roped into the situation, while still calling him out for his neglect. It's a tricky balancing act, and for the most part, I think it succeeds. Also, Lisa has a subplot about helping cheerleaders or something. Season 26, Covercraft, is a fun episode of The Simpsons, and people should watch it. There. That's my pitch. I mean, this is a story about Homer, Lovejoy, Hibbert, Kirk, and Apu starting a cover band together. I'm pitching you a midlife crisis hobby, not a complex story full of emotional gut punches. No, Covercraft is just a good time, you know? The jokes are solid, they use their secondary characters well, the hidden autoerotic asphyxiation jokes are among the best hidden autoerotic asphyxiation jokes in Simpsons history. Thanks, Matt. Now there's one character cheat that you'll have to deal with, but I think it's within the suspension of disbelief for the show. Even still, it has a very likable and endearing final act. I can't think of many Simpsons episodes that would earnestly go for this moment. I will warn you though, hoping for a dream will probably get stuck in your head afterward. Damn you, Sungazer. Season 27's Halloween of Horror is the most chalky pick on this list. Ask any Simpsons fan about the best modern episodes and you'll often get this as an answer. And its reputation is well earned. It features such a compelling Homer Lisa story. It centers around Lisa getting frightened during Halloween, forcing Homer to stay home for a relaxed, non-scary holiday. Meanwhile, Marge, Bart, and Maggie go trick-or-treating before it's too late. There's a little bit of everything here. You get a suspenseful character journey with Homer and Lisa, and a supremely entertaining Marge and Bart subplot. It really feels like the show is making the most out of this rare opportunity, this chance to do an actual Halloween episode in-universe, without the treehouse. Just the idea alone is clever enough, but the execution of the story is even better. Halloween of Horror is a true modern classic. You know, there just aren't that many Marge-Lisa conflicts in The Simpsons. Season 27's The Margian Chronicles helps to rectify that. Lisa signs up to be a future space traveler to Mars and develops a huge rivalry with Marge when she joins in. Think of this as a more down-to-earth Deep Space Homer, if you will. A version of Deep Space Homer with chickens instead of ants. Both Lisa and Marge are very stubborn in their own ways, they both have their own personal skill sets. Surprisingly, prepping for space travel meets both of them halfway. This is such a good setting to show off how similar these two are, how they'll butt heads with each other about their perceived differences. It has a strong underlying relationship question. How should Marge react to Lisa wanting to leave Earth forever someday? I can see why people might be skeptical of this one because of its premise, but go into it with an open mind. 
the story is told with a degree of cynicism and self-awareness that it feels just as believable as other Simpsons episodes. In season 28's Looking for Mr. Good Bart, Bart starts up a side hustle in which he pretends to be elderly lady's loving grandson in exchange for cash and gifts. You know, one of those classic Bart preys upon the emotionally vulnerable stories. It's the kind of thing that could very easily go off the rails, but they absolutely nailed it here. The tone is relatively breezy, and he's upfront enough about his grift that Acts 1 and 2 never feels too depressing. Honestly, I kind of wish we had a whole episode of Agnes and Bart. They are such a fun pairing. The story does take a rather serious turn at the midpoint, but it generally works well for Bart's character journey. Also, we have a B-plot of Homer and Lisa getting into a Pokemon Go type game. It's an extremely on-the-nose parody, but it does have an extremely cute and fun parody of the theme song from the Alright Jims, I don't want to upset you, or the sleeping Yoshi in your profile pic, but I'm gonna have to stop you there. The whole Pikemon Get subplot is just another example of the Simpsons latching onto a craze and doing jokes that the internet had already driven into the ground months before. I've definitely come around to enjoy this episode for its very genuine A-plot, but I can't take it seriously when you have moments like that theme song parody. I think they've done better, more specific jokes about Japanese games and anime, and it's a little dumb how the whole song only covers the first verse of the Pokemon intro. At the very least, I'll give it credit for tying into the main plot, instead of being an awkward transition, like this. Like what? Look, this recommendation isn't complicated. It's The Simpsons, but transformed into a fantasy setting. Why wouldn't you want to give it a look? They take the story in an interesting direction, a discussion of magic, religion, and the class system. Also, Marge's mom is here. I wouldn't have guessed their Dungeons & Dragons episode would have so much Jacqueline Bouvier. Now obviously, a lot of the fun is in checking out how all of our favorite characters appear in this world. You can tell the writers had fun picking out fantasy roles for everyone, and the character designers in bringing them to life. Lots of sneaky little references too. Thanks, Rob. This is a classic change of pace episode, something to put on if you want to see something different. In fact, after watching The Surfsons, it kind of makes me wonder what a Matt Groening fantasy show would be like. Hey, I said I was only going to put one Trials of Horror on this list, but I didn't say anything about Thanksgiving. If you like their Halloween specials and miss this one, you gotta look it up. We've got a parody of Apocalypto with turkeys, a Black Mirror story with AI Marge, and a monster movie with kids on a spaceship. The turkey segment is among the most grisly things The Simpsons has ever done. Personally, I'm somewhat squeamish about this kind of stuff, but even I love how gratuitous the violence is. They were smart to have the Marge segment in the middle, which is more of a psychological thriller. A funny and complicated relationship between AI Marge and the real Marge. And the space segment is a solid science fiction monster adventure. Notably, it features the final performance of Rusie Taylor as Martin. I'm not going to spoil it, but wow, what a send-off. And finally, it's got the creepiest credit sequence in Simpsons history. I shudder just thinking about it. With that last bit of intrigue, this list is complete. Honestly, there are a bunch of other episodes I wanted to include here. I actually omitted some of my favorites. I wanted to get a good mix of Homer, Marge, Bart, and Lisa stories from various seasons. If you're in the mood for more Simpsons episodes, or just want an idea of what they've been up to, I recommend checking them out. I've listed them in the video description for your reference. Let me know in the comments what some of your favorite episodes are from the later seasons, or what you think of these entries. Personally, I was surprised at how many background jokes I didn't notice until doing the screen caps for this video. Those background artists sure are sneaky. Maybe someday I'll do a second round of recommendations, or hit up the middle seasons of the show. There are just so many episodes that rarely get talked about. Let me know what you'd like to see next. As always, thanks for watching.